Good morning. Good morning. And the Lord be with you. Also and a very warm welcome to everyone as we gather in the Lord's house for worship this morning. Uh, a few announcements as we begin. Just a reminder that we are having a coffee hour this morning. Uh, so everyone's invited to please stay after worship for a little while. We'll have uh, have a cup of coffee and might be some other goodies back there as well that you can enjoy along with that. And a little time for some fellowship. We, don't, we haven't been able to do that so much these last uh, several months. A reminder that we do have a missionary coming to visit next week. Uh, did you want to tell us anything more about that?
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I lift up my eyes to the hills. My help comes from the Lord. The Lord is your keeper. The sun shall not strike you by day. The Lord will keep you from all evil. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. My help comes from the Lord.
us pray. Heavenly Father, during his earthly ministry, your son Jesus healed the sick and raised the dead. By the healing medicine of the word and sacraments, pour into our hearts such love toward you that we may live eternally. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
knowledge of God. For from him and through him and to him are all things. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years, who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except except Peter and James and John and the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them, that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And we join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. 
whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's message is primarily from our Old Testament reading in Lamentations. We'll also talk a little bit about the Gospel reading today. Uh, but from Lamentations, I read to you these words. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as you hear those words, they're, they're wonderful words that we hear about our God and, and what he will do for us and how he cares for us. But the reality is, and, and as you read through Lamentations, is it is a lament. Most likely written by Jeremiah, most likely written just after 
Israel or the southern kingdom had gone into exile. The Babylonians had come in and, and taken them away. Those that were slaughtered in the siege that came upon Jerusalem were taken to Babylon, where they became slaves and servants up there. The temple that would never be destroyed, would never be taken away from the people. The place where the Lord dwelt among them, where sacrifice was offered, was gone, destroyed. And lost. So put yourself in the mindset of Jeremiah and those of Israel of that day. Hope was over. It was gone. There was nothing to look forward to. How crushing a blow could you give to us, God? That was what the lament was really about. How bad can it get? It feels, Lord, like you have boxed me in and you continue to, to throw blows at me. Life stinks. And what do I have to look forward to? Nothing. It's over. Oh, Lord, how can this possibly be? And then in the book of Lamentations, Jeremiah, the most likely author of, of this book, comes up with these wonderful words. In the midst of what seems to be the end, in the midst of what seems to be a time that we are completely separated from God and his judgment is upon us, what is going to get me through this? How am I going to make it? And we have the beautiful words, a reminder that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. That's what would pull them through. The difference and the contrast here is the way of how things seem and feel versus what we know to be true about our God. How it seems and feels is miserable. That's what they were saying it felt like. We can only imagine, I mean, we have troubles in our lives. But we can only imagine what it would feel like to see a warring nation come in and, and destroy your world around you. I've never seen anything like that. I've seen pictures of Europe and, and, and certainly you know, other places in World War II where, where war took place and people were certainly uprooted and destroyed and so on. But I can only imagine what that kind of a life must be like for people. And yet in the midst of that, there's hope. And that's what Jeremiah, what God is reminding us of today. Fast forward just a moment to our gospel reading. We have two different things that are going on in the gospel reading. We have Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, whose daughter is deathly ill. He's heard about Jesus and the things that Jesus can do. And when Jesus is near, he comes to him. Jesus, my daughter, is near death. Come and lay your hands on her and make her well. And Jesus willingly says he will do that. There's a great crowd that is with him and, and his disciples are with him too. And they make their way towards Jairus' house, but it says that there is a, a woman who's had a discharge of blood for 12 years. She has seen a ton of doctors. She has spent everything that she has. That sounds a lot like our world today in many cases, doesn't it? People that are going bankrupt, 
trying to get medical care. And it says that she's gone bankrupt, spending everything that she had and has had no relief. 12 years. To me, this in the gospel reading sounds a lot like our world. People that are struggling with health problems, people that are struggling with all kinds of problems, and it goes on for years. Oh Lord, how long? How long must I suffer? How long must I endure? And it says that she knew if she just touched his robe, she would be healed. She had faith that Jesus could do it, that he would do it, and that she would be healed. So as he went by, she touched his robe and she felt the power in her body and she knew. She knew immediately somehow that, that indeed she was healed and she was made better again. And it says that Jesus knew that, that power had gone out to do this. And he says, who touched me? And you can just see his disciples kind of laughing. Okay, we're in the middle of a, a huge crowd you're walking through. Everyone just touched you, Jesus. That's, that's what happens in a crowd. But it says that this woman, in fear and trembling, <clears throat> confessed everything to Jesus. And he says, woman, your faith has made you well. Trusting in Jesus to get her through the problem. Knowing the hope that she had in him. Believing that, that he could and would do it. But for 12 years, she had been enduring. For 12 years, God had been leading her towards this faith in Jesus. And isn't that what he does with us quite often? When we believe we can handle everything, we don't need God, do we? When we believe we have everything under control, we don't need God. Because we've got it. It's one of my, my least favorite, I, I have a few least favorite bumper stickers, but one of mine is, is God is my co-pilot. Well, if God is my co-pilot, then who's flying the plane? Uh, and it's probably not the best thing that I am flying the plane. But we need God to be doing that. I'll be there as a faithful passenger, trusting that he is going to deliver me exactly where I need to be and when I need to be there. So in this crowd, Jesus heals this woman. And I kind of wondered in my mind what was Jairus thinking. Hey, I'm, I'm kind of in a hurry here, Jesus. My daughter is dying. I know you want to take care of other people, but my daughter is dying. It isn't the way our life works, too. Everyone has troubles and difficulties that they're struggling with. But who's are most important? Your troubles might seem big. Might be huge, but I have troubles too. And no matter how big or little they are, to us at that moment in time, they are huge. Because that's where our mind is and our, our, our troubles are, are consuming us. So Jairus has some people that come to him and talk to him and they say, don't bother the teacher anymore. Your daughter has died. You can only imagine the, the grief, the momentary grief that he's feeling. And Jesus overhears it, it says. And he says, don't worry about it. She's only sleeping. Let's go. 
And he takes his disciples and Jairus and he goes to the house and it says the people laughed at him uh, for saying that she's only sleeping. You know, don't, don't you know a dead person when you see one? We do. And she is dead. And Jesus goes up to the room with his disciples. And he says the words, Talitha Kumi, little girl, I say to you, arise. And she gets up and, and gets out of the bed. Can you imagine the joy that Jairus must have had at that time? And his family? Seeing the restoration that, that God had given them? Wow. Pretty amazing. Now we have to keep in mind that God doesn't promise he's going to take away all of our troubles. He doesn't promise he's going to, to raise those who have died in our lives. At this time, he does promise all who die in the faith are on the last day going to be raised, bodily raised from the dead and are going to be in his presence eternally. But it does speak to the power of God to help us through our daily troubles and struggles. It gives us those words, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Assurance that we're not walking through this life alone. And we're assured in Lamentations that he doesn't give us these struggles just because he enjoys watching us struggle and squirm and, and let, let's see what they'll do next. But rather, it's always an attempt to draw us closer to himself. Israel, Judea in Lamentations, was taken away in exile the temple destroyed because of their sin, their worship of false gods, their refusal to acknowledge the true God. And God wanted them back. He wanted them to repent of their sin and return to him. So there was always the promise that, yes, you're going to go into exile, but in 70 years, you're going to come back. The temple is going to be restored. Return to me and follow me. And that's what he was speaking about here in the middle of the book of Lamentations as we have those words. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They're new every morning. Great. Is your faithfulness. In the book of Hebrews, in chapter 11, the great faith chapter, in verse 13, it's summing up a number of the Old Testament figures who had trusted in God. They had believed his promises. You hear about Abraham and Moses and, and, and so on, a lot of folks who came after Adam and Eve. It says that these all died in faith not having received the things promised. But having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth, they believed God's promises. They believed that, that God was Indeed, the one who was filled with that steadfast love for his people. That his mercies were never going to come to an end. That he would always be faithful. So even though in their earthly life they never fully received all the promises of God. The, the promise of life eternal and, uh, and, and being in, in heaven bodily raised with him. They knew the day would come even though they died. The day would still come when they would be raised from the dead and they would be with him eternally. That's the hope that we live in. Thanks be to God that most of our troubles 
end at some point. And we don't have to continue to, to struggle with, with all of the troubles that we have in our life. God takes them away as he, as, as he restores us and draws us closer to himself. But even when he does not, our hope continues to be in our God, who has made promises to us. Promises of forgiveness and promises of life. Assured to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift from God who came into our world to give his life for ours. In order that we would be reconciled to God and made to be his people. Now here in this world through the holy baptism that we receive. And strengthened in his word. But his people eternally. What wonderful gifts. He gives to us. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Your mercies are new every morning. In the midst of trials and tribulations and struggles that you might have, the Lord is at work, drawing you back to himself, encouraging us to trust in him, to know his mercy, to know his salvation. And to rely on him for all of our need. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> morning. Many of these are listed in the worship folder, but uh, I do want to mention them. Uh, Amy Hughes, uh, niece of Mike Johnston, who's having some health problems. Jill Clinchock, sister of Mike Johnston, who's having some health problems. Chandler Montgomery, a friend of Mike Johnston, who was seriously injured in a car accident. For Tommy Robertson, brother-in-law of Mike Johnston, who is recovering from surgery. For Barbara Sethman, wife of Roger Sethman. She's undergoing some testing uh, for health issues. Uh, and we pray for Margaret Ann Michael, a cousin of Judith Poole, who is suffering with lung cancer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we, we pray that you would continue to be at work in our lives. In the midst of the trials and tribulations and struggles that we endure each and every day, we pray that you would continue to give us those eyes that see, that see you at work leading us back to you, leading us to repentance, leading us to hope, hope that comes from the forgiveness of sins that you give to us and the promise of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Help us to faithfully endure to the very end that we would be yours now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our church, our church here on earth and all of those who proclaim the gospel loudly, that they might do so faithfully and that, that people would hear and respond to that message, that hearing of of the salvation that comes in Christ Jesus our Lord, your faithful church would continue to bring more and more people into that faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our civil government here on earth, for those who lead us, for President Biden and Governor Northam, and for all others, that they would be led by your word to do that which is in keeping with your will and your ways. And we pray for those who serve in our government in the forms of military and police. We thank you for the gifts that you give to us through them, the safety that you allow us. And we pray that you would keep them safe as they carry out their duties. Be with Brad DeVore, Brandon Ferry, Jordan Lester, Kyle Luter, Garrett Morris, and Meredith Morris. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
And Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are sick or suffering in any way this day. That you would be with them in their time of need. That if it be your will, you would bring them the healing that they need. But Lord, most of all, we pray that you would give them your peace and your presence. Knowing that you are with them always through whatever they may endure. Be especially this day with Amy Hughes, Jill Clinshock, Linda Mann, Chandler Montgomery, Tommy Robertson, Phil Rose, Barbara Sethman, Margaret Ann Michael, Deborah Toth, and Gary Willing. Be with Richard Amos, Joanne Augsburger, Liz Bassett, Mary Broderick, John Dawson, Rick Donnelly, Lonnie Ellis, and Kevin Farkas. Be with Paul Farkas, Cameron Garten, Faye Garza, Eleanor Gilmain, Bill Herndon, Heather Honeycutt, Stuart Jackson, and Gary Yeager. With Janet Lohman, Kirsten Lohmeyer, Todd Lowry, Carolyn Lucenhop, Cindy Marshall, Cindy Messina, and Thelma Miller. With Wayne Past, Karen Ramming, Elsie Sauer, Mark Sauer, Connie Scott, April Sethman, Fred Tate, Paul Tharp, Billy Walton, Rob Weston, and Bill Zanakis. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you be with all of those who grieve the passing of loved ones this day, especially the family and friends of Lee Birchman. Lord, we thank you for the life that you gave to Lee and the opportunities that we've had to, to know him and share in the faith with him. And Lord, we thank you for having gathered him to yourself. Give your peace and your comfort to all who grieve. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we pray for those who serve as missionaries or in international ministries. Lord, we pray that you would keep them strong in, in their gospel proclamation. Keep them secure in the life that they are, are carrying out on your behalf, wherever they might be around the world. We especially pray for Pastor Matt Wood and family serving Indonesia. Lord, keep them safe. Help them to do with that which you would have them to do that many might come to believe. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Please rise. Now may this body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith from this life and on into life everlasting. Depart in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you. 